welcome to Keeping the Hill on the Horizon. I'm your host, Roy Nolan. Thank you for tuning in. This is our very first episode. We are so happy to have you. It took us a lot to get this going, and we're glad to be here. Keeping the Hill on the Horizon is a show that is dedicated to keeping you motivated, stimulated, and activated to age well and live better. You never have to be over the hill as long as you exercise, stay positively motivated, and eat healthy. We have some great segments and experts who are going to help us stay motivated. We're going to do Victory of the Day, which is where you, the audience, call in and tell us what you do every day to maintain or achieve your goals. So send us those emails at roy at kthoth.com. That's roy at kthoth.com. And we're going to do some shout-outs to the military and to just everyone tuning in. We're so grateful to have you. Um, next, we're going to have a stretch because before you do any kind of exercise, you have to stretch, exercise, and wake up your muscles. We're going to have a little fun with something we call the cardio countdown. We're going to win play some music for 30 seconds and dance around a little bit. You're going to see me cut a rug. <laughs> and then we're going to go into our workout, you know, because when you wake up in the morning, if the first thing you do is work out, you guarantee to have a better day. Then we're going to do something. We're going to have some fun with a segment we like to call Take a Knee. A friend of mine, Craig Morgan, searches things out in the fitness world that people do that's a little bit crazy where we tell them, hey, take a time out, think about what you're doing, and then we're going to give you a proper strategy so that you can accomplish your goals. And last but not least, we're going to finish up with nutrition. Because before you do anything, you have to put good things into your body to get good things from your body. So that's Keeping the Hill on the Horizon. We guarantee you that you will enjoy our show. Thank you for tuning in once again. And we're going to start with an interview with Dr. Lorenda Jones, which has been pre-recorded. Good morning, Dr. Jones, and thank you for joining us all the way from North Carolina. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Here at Keeping the Hill on the Horizon, we believe in aging well and living better. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you for asking. I woke up this morning, and I'm doing good. So why don't you tell us about your book and your radio podcast and, and a little bit about yourself? Of course, I was going through many, many issues with my family. And things were very, very intense, but I also worked a lot with adolescents. And I really, really enjoyed it. And as I was going through all of that, uh, I just was, you know, <laughs> You can say getting overwhelmed with everything that I was going through, but I still wanted to study. And I enjoyed the theological aspect of the studies that I did. So I wanted to get a doctorate degree in clinical Christian counseling. So while I was in the course of doing that, um, I also joined an association called the National Christian Counselors. Association, and I became a licensed pastoral counselor. While I was getting my master's degree and when I finished it, I was grandfathered in um, an organization to become a board certified professional counselor. Until 2001, I um, had a death in my family, and I was actually the funeral director, I was the, uh, the counselor, I was the family member, I was everything. Wow, that sounds like a huge responsibility. It must have been difficult and, and, and challenging and a little bit daunting, huh? But can I tell you something? I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed every role that I had. I enjoyed it. Well, why don't you tell us about your ministry? Because I know you did a ministry and a, and a podcast as well as written a book. Yes. Uh, the book, I always knew I was going to write a book. I knew that it was going to have the word impossible in it. I just didn't know where it was going to fit. But I knew 
knew that the word impossible would be in that book. So when I was going through all of these changes, a friend of mine had come up with the name of Beneath the Grief Ministries, which has been in existence since 2001. What does the title of your ministry symbolize? Beneath the Grief means that a person when they're having a grief, not just a graveyard grief, but a grief of any specific problem. You see, people only see grief as a graveyard grief, and it's not just graveyard grief. Graveyard grief is just one aspect of grief. Grief is many things. Grief is divorce. Grief is abortion. Grief is relationship breakups. Grief is everywhere. And I try to tell people, let's face it, everybody grieves something. So people can grieve individually and as groups? 9-11. 9-11. People are still grieving 9-11. There you have it. People are grieving, and they won't recognize it. But you see, what happens sometimes with grief, because it is a uh, quote-unquote um, term they use in counseling, they lump it all together in one category as individual counseling or group counseling. They, they, they individualize that. So therefore, people don't have to deal with it because it's all clumped into one category. You can't do that. Not with grief. You can't, you can't clump it in one category. Grief is many categories. How can people handle their grief? The be well, first of all, brother, they have to recognize that there's a problem. They have to recognize it. And they don't want to do that. Because first of all, when you bring it up, they don't want to talk about it. And, and that's how I go in. I, I get my assessment. I do all my work, but I go in on what the problem is that came in the first place. And a lot of times I always ask, I do ask that question, have you lost someone in your family or have you lost something of importance? And most of the time they say yes. So I'm able to help them to acknowledge that there's something there that they lost. And again, it's not just death of a loved one. But if it's something that they have not dealt with in dealing with that loved one that passed away, it oftentimes brings up the other griefs that they have. Tell us how grief can rob people of motivation. Are you kidding rob them of motivation, well, they're not going to want to do anything. They're going to want to sit on the couch. They're going to want to deny that there's a problem. And that's a big word right there is denial. They want to deny that there's a problem. And there is a problem. So what I am responsible of doing is waking up those faculties in the brain to acknowledge that there's a problem. Let's acknowledge it first. If we know that there's a problem, then we can help someone. So people confuse grief as only being related to death of a loved one, huh? All the time. All the time. Hey, Roy, a lot of times it's not even about the grief of a loved one. It's not even about that. But they don't want to hear that word grief. Grief. It's a hard word to spell it. Grief. What in your book helps people handle their grief? Well, there are chapters that tell them what the grief looks like. That it's prolonged grief. Keep it going. Grief is complicated. It gives them a sense to look at. What does the grief really look like? And a lot of times with African Americans, 
we have that prolonged grief. We keep it going, and we keep it going. And it's complicated. Grief is complicated, period. But I, in the book, try to let them see that it's prolonged, that it's complicated, and to look at that. Then, how to handle it. Can you share with us some specific techniques from your book? I am the person that do tissues. I don't know. It's just something about those simple little tissues. <laughs> something about them. And it's, it's crazy, right? But I tell people that, you know, in the store they have those tissues that are cubes. They look like little boxes of pretty cubes. <laughs> and I tell people to get a box of those tissues and pick a design. They look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> they, I say pick a design. And when you pick that design, when you're picking it, that design is going to remind you of that situation. A lot of times people pick peaceful boxes. The boxes of tissues that look very peaceful. <laughs> yeah, it looks very peaceful. And they pick those boxes of tissues and as they're going through their grieving stage, whatever the grief it is, it doesn't matter. When they're doing it, I say take a tissue. Take one. Each time that you are grieving the thing, the person, whatever it is, you take one tissue from your box. And they take it and they do it, but they always reflect to the box. Because the box is it, it's, it's a peace, it's a calm about it that they... They can recognize that because that's what they want. They want peace. <laughs> so as people take a tissue from the box, it helps them both to recognize when they're experiencing grief and get a physical handle on grief, physically learning how to, quote, handle their grief. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Hey. I'm creative. I'm real creative. But that box of tissues, that box of tissues was so important. And when they, I noticed the boxes that they picked were so pretty that I was able to say, look at the box that you picked. Look at the box you picked. And of course, Roy, you got the other side of the one who gets the box and they put the box under the bed. <laughs> they put the box under the bed because they don't want to deal with that. I have a person now, and she told me. She told me. She, she told me what the box looks like. She told me it's under the bed. But she knows. She knows. She knows. She said, I have to take that box from under the bed. She acknowledges it. And, and talking about it, but she won't get that box from under that bed. So I'm working with her to get the box from under the bed. <laughs> That's motivation. <laughs> motivation. Then, there's a, can, can I, let me tell you another one. I'm going to tell you another one. The journal. The journal is always good to use. People don't like to use writing skills. But they don't think they can write. They don't know what to write. And I encourage them always write one word. Don't write me a sentence. Write one word. A lot of times if you look at the way they write the word, see, I can kind of interpret writing a little bit too. So when they're writing the word and it sometimes is so little, it's so small, you can barely see it, and I say, how do you feel about that? And then they're like, oh my goodness, small. It gives the, a door opening to talk about that issue. Thank you so much, Dr. Jones. We, we, we thank you for joining us and giving us some tips and strategies on grief and helping us stay positively motivated in our lives and hopefully keeping the hill on the horizon. We want to give a big military shout out to Carol Lenore of the U.S. Air Force Reserve. Thank you for being a friend. We like to acknowledge our military. And now we're going to go right into our workout, which was also pre-recorded. 
Good morning and welcome to another episode of Keeping the Hill on the Horizon. We're very fortunate today to have Malena with us. She's going to instruct me on Pilates and how Pilates can improve our health and get us back into feeling good in our bodies. And we're very fortunate to have you. Malena, will you tell us a bit about yourself? Yeah, so uh, I am uh, from Denmark. I live in uh, New Jersey and I teach at Cure Pilates in New Jersey and Hoboken. And I, I come from dance, I was a dancer, I had a career there and um, moved here and did a lot of studies on the body and um, especially on about uh, body awareness. So then I took a Pilates degree and now I, I teach body awareness through Pilates, I'd say. <laughs> Very good. You're going to help me get more comfortable with this. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. um, yeah. So Rai has, um, has a very good posture. It's a little challenge with the spine because of the scoliosis that you had from the very beginning. We're all born with sort of, we're not all in balance. We want to be, but we're not. So we have some imbalances and one challenge for you was the scoliosis. Can you tell right. us just a little bit about that? Yeah, um, I had scoliosis uh, apparently all my life. I had it corrected at the age of 31. Uh, it was about 15 years ago now. And um, it was a curve, a 60 degree curve in my spine and a compensation curve. So they, uh, yeah, I had two surgeries to put a sp uh, brace on the front of my spine and the back of my spine to correct my posture because I was suffering from lower back pain that was based on my curvature and um, the way I moved and walked, I was overcompensating with the muscles on one side of my body. Yeah, so with Pilates, there's actually a lot you can do about helping. So you actually go into the muscles and stretches. It can be a challenging with a, with a physicality like that to really get into the muscles and stretch. So if you have a good Pilates instructor, she or he will be able to help you with that. So um, yeah, so just I want to encourage if you have that issue. So today we're going to start with uh, Roy. You're standing here by the edge of the mat. Yeah, and you're facing here. And we're going to do a roll down, which is great for the spine. Um, to stretch the vertebrae away from each other and give more space. So you're just looking straight ahead, dropping the arms down along the side, and you're just gonna drop the head forward, relaxing, yeah. And then you're gonna roll down, heavy head and hands. It's gonna take you down. So you're gonna roll for the spine, all the way down, and keep the weights on the toes as well as the heels. So you're gonna move forward a little bit, Roy. There, good. And then we're gonna roll back up. So dropping the tailbone down, Heavy sit bones, yep, you can bend your knees a little bit, drop the head down, yep, and come into the spine, rolling up, that's it. And shoulders down, now here, yeah, good, tension away from the shoulders, drop the shoulders away from the ears. Let's do that one more time, inhale, and exhale, dropping the shoulders and roll forward. Stretching through, bending the knees, hang out here a little bit, Keep the weight in the toes, on the toes as well as the heels. Bend your knees a little bit more. Yep, and then walk up uh, onto the mat on all fours. Yeah, and then walk forward, drop the knees down, knees underneath the hip, and feet, hands underneath the shoulders. So move your hands forward a little bit so the spine can be long. Right, and move forward a little bit more. There, good, yes, exactly. Now lift your head up a little bit, yeah, and drop down here. Yeah, now see the shoulders felt down. Yeah, and you can feel that too. Good. Now we're gonna do cat and cow, or cat and camel, which is also an exercise for mobility in the spine, flexibility, so you're gonna inhale through the nose. Exhale, round your back and press your back up into my hand and look up into the navel. So press up here, yeah, inhale, and then other way. So you're lifting the belly up to my hand and you're dropping the head forward, dropping the tailbone down and the head down, stretching your arms there. Now go ahead and lift up more here, come round your back, that's it. Now drop the head forward, there, good. Now reverse that, so you're gonna to look to the ceiling, dropping the spine down, sticking the buttock out, yep. And again, lift your belly up, look to the navel and round your back, yeah. And reverse that, looking up, dropping the shoulders, there. And again, press up into my Now hands. I'm inhaling when I'm down, you are inhaling on the way down. Okay. Yep, and then you exhale as you come up. Yep, exactly. Inhale down, press up, lift up, stretching, lower back, middle back, upper back, and then reverse, 
sticking the buttock out, dropping the shoulders away from the ears, move your weight forward to your knees, there you go, so you're not pushing back, that's it, that's it, and then one more time, press up into my hand, dropping the tailbone down, lift up, and reverse, keeping your weight forward on the knees, there you go. not too far, yeah, that's it, good, now find the flat back, so you're going to lengthen the neck, neck is an extension of the spine, dropping the shoulders down, soften your upper body a little bit more, right, there you go, now, the spine stays the same in this exercise, so don't move the spine, you stay in the center of, uh, of the mat, so you're not shifting any weight, no weight shift. And then you lift the belly up to the spine, so, and the spine stays the same, yeah, there. That's to stabilize the torso. Now slide your right hand forward without shifting any weight, yeah, just touch the fingertips down to the sand there. Lift the heel of the hand up, just the fingertips, no weight on the fingertips though, uh -huh. Stay in the center and slide your left foot back. No weight and no weight shift. There, good. Stay in the center and lift the arm and the leg up and touch down, just touch. Stay in the center, up and touch. Lift the belly up and up and touch. Two more, up and touch. Last one, good. And slide the hand and the knee back in, finding the center. Now you can feel you shifted a little yeah, bit, but not very much, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Now drop the shoulders down the back. There you go, beautiful. And then lift the belly to spine without moving the spine. So drop it down here again. There, that's it. Stabilize the torso. Slide your left hand forward. Yep, no weight. And then your right foot back. Stretching the leg. There you go. Now lift that belly up. Yep. And then go ahead and lift the leg and the arm. One. Touch down. Two. Three. Four. Let's do one more. Five. And come into center. Finding the weight on the bow. Yeah. Now you can sit back in child pose. Bring your heels together. Open your knees a little bit to this more to the side. Yep and then go ahead and drop your tailbone down towards your heels as far as you feel you can. This is lengthening the spine, especially the lower back, and then the shoulders dropping down the back at all times, there you go. And then just drop the head forward and relax. Now a good instructor could, <laughs> could come back and press down a little bit, but don't let them do too much. Take care of your knees here. And then back. Come on uh, onto your back right. <laughs> Again with the head down this way. Yep, and then move up on the mat so your head is on the mat. And then bend your knees. Yeah, exactly. That's good. Now we're going to do a few abdominal exercises. So, uh, Roy, if you move in, you now you're a little bit crooked on the mat, so okay. move to the center. Down this way? That other way. There. And then your feet are just this way. Okay. Good, so now stretch your arms down along the side. And now bend your knees up to your chest and hold on and bring them sort of in so you're hocking the knees into the chest there. Good. You ever see that Now, upper body curve up here. So you're gonna inhale and exhale, lift your head up and then go ahead and lift up. I'm gonna press you in a little bit up so you come up a little higher there. This is the starting position. You're gonna, I'm gonna ask Roy to lift your arms this way and your legs up towards my hand. So your arms gonna go up that way and stretch your legs this way. And then pick a big circle with the arms and then hug your knees back in. in. Exhale, yeah. So inhale, lengthen out. Come around, exhale, bring the knees in. Yeah, and again, inhale. And now drop the navel to spine as you do this. Exactly, let's do three more. Inhale away, big circle, exhale. Two more, inhale. And drop the belly in, in, in. Yep, the last one, inhale. Arms around, exhale, in. And hug your knees in and relax your head down. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> this is work. <laughs> right. But it doesn't hurt. <laughs> right. <laughs> so now we're gonna do a little, other, another exercise for the stomach and legs. You're stretching the hamstrings as well. As well. So stretch your legs up this way and flex the feet, that meaning the toes down towards you, the other way, there you go. Now climb up with your hands up on your right leg, all the way up, as high up as you can. The other leg is gonna drop down, yeah. Now bring the belly to spine and lift, just hold your knee, the leg yourself, yeah. That's it, good. You're gonna pull the right leg towards you twice. Pull, pull, change, and then change legs. Pull, pull, and change. 
pull, pull, and pull, pull. Now, inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale. Yeah. And inhale, inhale, and exhale, exhale. Inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale through the mouth. Inhale, inhale through the nose, exhale, exhale through the mouth. Again, inhale, and exhale. Last one. Inhale, last one. And exhale. That's it. And put your knees down. Put your feet down. <laughs> so, I can feel it <laughs> yeah. working here. Right. So that's very important to, to, instead of letting the belly pop up, out, you want to bring the navel to spine so you support the lower back. Otherwise you will have, you know, your back will sway and you'll get some back pain. Right. So bring the navel in to lengthen the back. Another uh, two or two more abdominal exercises. So put your, do a triangle with your hands like that. And then put it sort of under the, uh, on the sacrum, which is the bone here on the back. So you can put that, yep. And then drop your hip down. Now stretch your legs right up to the ceiling or to the sky here. Yeah. And then lift your head up on the exhale, rounding up as high as you can. You're gonna inhale to lower the legs. And then exhale, lift the legs back up. Yeah. Dropping the belly down. Yeah. And again, inhale to lower. Exhale up. Good. Inhale lower. Exhale up. Yeah. Good. Two, three more. And up. Good. Exhale up, bring the belly down. Last one. And pull it in and lift up. Put your legs back down. Excellent. Oh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you sort of feel an outline of your abs. Right. right. <laughs> so now let's see if we can find the obliques, which are the ones that are sort of on the side. On the side. So hands behind the neck. And then bend your right knee in over your chest and stretch your left foot out to my hand there. Good. Now bring them a little bit in together like that. And then bring your armpit or your shoulder towards the navel. Lift up high. Yeah. There. Good. So you see his uh, elbow is still out to the side. So go ahead and stay and lift up. There. Now change to the other side. You're going to go opposite. Change. Stretch the leg. Yep. And stretch out here. Yep. Change to the other side. Straighten your knee. Yeah. Now bring the knee in, so you ah. this is it. Yeah, okay. so you're coming towards the center, right? right? Yep, and change. Come on, over. Yep, that's it. And change. <laughs> yep. And Raj really doing a good job, you know, of, uh, thinking oh. about the spine and his issue there. But come on up, bring that. Yep, shoulder up to the navel, oh. up over to the hip, diagonally up. Keep going, straighten the legs a little bit more. <sighs> and straighten and straighten and one more set and last one over here and come on back down <laughs> yeah feel it form is very important with pilates yeah it is that's a, that's sort of the the foundation and then you build from there so um okay go ahead and, and roll up and so you're sitting up and then bend your knees in I'm gonna demonstrate this one. So you're gonna come down here and then you're just gonna hold on to your ankles. Yeah, from the outside, like that. Yeah, good. And now round your spine, look to the navel. Yeah. This now, one is tough for me. It is. Now lengthen your arms a little bit. Stretch your arms. There you go. Now here, lift your feet up. There. Good. We're just gonna roll here. Yep, you're gonna roll back and roll back up. Whoa. <laughs> no. So that's a tough one. But that's because of the, the, the nature of your spine. Oh, okay. So normally when you roll up and down like that, you get a good stretch and it's a sort of good massage. Okay. So um, I'll try it again. See if you can find it. Yeah, let's see if we can find it because you do have some mobility there. So you may be able to exit it. Now sure. drop the navel to spine. Okay. Yeah. And then go ahead and roll back. And up. There. I'm going to help you. Now, if you keep your feet together, touching together, you'll be able to do it. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, and roll back and then come back up. There you go. Now hold your knees close to you and hold them close and then pull yourself up. Hold up here. Hold up. Oh, up here. Yeah, right back. Okay. Now open, stretch your arms. That's it. Keep your feet together and then roll back. Keep the shape and roll back up. There you go. Ah. 
pull back and come back up. You're pulling yourself up. Right. Now you get a good roll. Now bring that navel to spine. There you go. Open the arms a little bit more. Stretch your arms a little bit more. Yeah. And then round in. Yeah, now roll back down. Inhale. Exhale up. Got it. Keep your feet together. Two more. Inhale back. Exhale up. Yes. Last one. And back up. There you go. You got it. <laughs> okay, now come around and then come up to standing. All the way up. Yeah, and then we can face the, the camera here. So, yeah, so that's good. Yep, so now uh, you're going to lift your arms out to the side. Up. Yeah, all the way up. Drop the shoulders down. Now you're lifting the belly in and softening the rib cage. Yeah, and then arms out to the side, back down, all the way down. Dropping the shoulder blades down one more time, up over the head. And now just lower your left arm down, palm into your hip, and then reach up and then stretch over. Just now slide this arm down. That's it. Hold on to your thigh there. Yeah. Drop the shoulder down, lengthen up, lifting up front to back. Yeah. And lift back up. Other side. Dropping this arm down. Yeah. And then drop over to the side, dropping the shoulders away from the ears. And lift back up. And both arms down along the side. Yep, how do you feel? Good. That's a good stretch. <laughs> so, yeah, so we did some back mobility, flexibility, and some stomach strength. And then some stretches at the end. And a little rolling is always a good stretch. Yeah. Well, that, there you have it, some introductory Pilates. It's very good. Um, I was told I have tightness in my pecs. I know I have tightness in my lower back, and I can feel the by the stretching, I'm a lot more mobile. So I like to have Malena back with us to show us some more exercises if she's back out here on the west coast from New York. But thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> and please try it at home. It's not hard. It's not doesn't hurt, and you feel better. Hey, this is Craig Morgan with this week's segment of Take a Knee. Now, usually on Take a Knee, what I do is I'll tell you what's harmful for you, what possibly injure you, or what's just plain stupid. Now, this week I overheard somebody talking about binge eating, which is eating excessively to the point where they just gorge ridiculously and then taking a laxative to get rid of all of the excess calories that they uh, that they gained during the week okay on this one i advise you to take a knee because this is just plain stupid because first of all not only can you injure yourself by disturbing your bowels by causing yourself to have dehydration and it's just plain nasty now if you're gonna have a diet or a routine that you stick to, stick to it if you wanna see results. The quick and easy way of binge eating then taking a laxative could definitely cause you an injury or make you sick. So I advise that you take a knee. Don't listen to that. Don't do that. Stick to your program, stick to your diet, stick to all your regular nutritional things that you have lined up in place and just do that no binge eating and no laxatives so this is craig morgan signing off till next time with take a knee we are in the kitchen with our very own fitness pilates instructor melena and she's going to show us a really tasty dish uh sort of a soup using pineapples and avocado with a little bit of jalapeno for flavoring. It's delicious. Hope you try it at home. Okay, so hello everybody. We're in the kitchen, yeah. And I will prepare a dish uh, that I read and learned from Alexandro Junger, which is a doctor who turned uh, alternative, but he's really cool because he uh, speaks a lot about how you can affect the environment through the way you eat. And we all need that right now. We need to turn that around. So um, please join us. So the dish is about, we have a pineapple and an avocado and a lime and a jalapeno. Pepper. 
And so the the measurements are important. I mean, you can vary. It, it can ch be changed because if you like pineapple, apple a lot, you put more of that in or more avocado. You know, you sort of have to feel your way through. But uh, I'm fine with about two to three cups of pineapple to one avocado and then a little bit of uh, jalapeno pepper. Um, as much as you want to spice it, go for it. And then one lime, juice of one lime. So I'm just going to cut the pineapple here. So I'm just going to cut from the end here. And this is a nice ripe pineapple. So I'm not going to use that right now. I might eat of it later. <laughs> but then take out here. Please. So I cut up the pineapple, so two to three cups, two and a half cup or so. Um, and then we'll cut the avocado. So I cut through here. And then I slice it in half. Yep, like that. Yep. And then I'll take it out with a spoon. One, I take the stone out like that, put that in the trash, and then take out the rest like that, avoiding a little stone there, or whatever that is. So, here, yep, and then I take the line and cut that. Now, here we go. Now we got it all except for the jalapeno pepper. We'll wait with that. So I take this lime and then I need my fork. So over here. Take this is just a blender, a hand blender. I'm not sure. I think it has another name. It's not that expensive. And you could start um, for soups um, and smoothies and, and things like this. Um, at home, I have a, a, a blender. Like a, 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 table blender. So I take the lime and the fork and I just squeeze the juice out of the lime. And so I make sure I get everything out, which is important. Don't want to waste too much or any. And then the second one. So one juice of one lime, one avocado, and two to three cups of chopped up pineapple. Okay, like that. Then I'll take the avocado, put that in here. Yeah, and then it's limited what can be in this container. So I'm going to blend it for two two periods. So I start this one up, and then I blend that, put that into a bigger container, and then I blend the second. Okay, so we're back. Uh, just blended the first batch, and then the second one is almost done. I'm gonna add the pelagino. So I cut out four small pieces like that. That's enough for me. <laughs> it might be even a little strong. So. I go for it. <laughs> and I blend the last here. So I blended the last bit and then I'm gonna add the two batches together. Then just stir, and there you go. That's the soup. And what's the title of it? What's the name of the soup? Uh, pineapple gazpacho. So yeah, now I'm gonna hand this to Roy. <laughs> so there we have it, pineapple gazpacho. I'm a nutrition segment by Malena, who's a Pilates instructor and a wonder in the kitchen. This is <laughs> delicious. It smells great. It's good for you because of the fiber in the pineapple. Please make it at home. So that's our show. Thank you for tuning in to Keeping the Hill on the Horizon. 
We welcome you back for our second episode, which was Thursday, September 22nd. We hope you can join us again. We look forward to always giving you the best information on health, nutrition, and all over fitness so that you can keep the hill on the horizon. So long.